Hi, this is your host Sapin Bhartiya and welcome to another episode of T3M, our topic of this month. And the topic of this month is, of course, security. And today we have two guests from Suza, Glenn Kusaka, Head of Product Security, and Fei Huang, VP of Security Strategy. Glenn, Fei, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Uh, Suzy has been around for a long time. Uh, actually, Suza, you know, you folks kind of also created the whole commercial model of Linux and open source. So you have seen a lot of history, and then also you folks serve customers, you know, all the way from newcomers to mission critical applications. So you have seen a lot in this world. So if I ask you folks how you have seen the evolution of security from the, the traditional IT world to this modern cloud native world? Well, Faye and I have been in security for pretty much our whole uh, career. So of course we've seen it from the early days, but um, most recently it's really exciting to be part of the whole cloud, um, uh, Kubernetes containers um, uh, movement, and then to focus on security for those specific infrastructures and use cases. As Glenn mentioned, you know, we were working in security space for maybe 20 plus years till now. And we were seeing this tech tech trend, right, keeps happening. We see virtual machine came out, we see container come out, we see Kubernetes come out, and we see serverless is coming out. So you can see clearly the step-by-step -step technology uh, keep, you know, involving and changing, upgrading. At the same time, of course, as a security player, we try to, you know, follow the trend as at the same time, you know, put the security on the same kind of on the same boat or train to uh, you know keep evolving, upgrading the security solutions for the for the industry. When we do look at uh, look back at the whole evolution of security, talk a bit about um, when you see uh, things like zero trust uh, architecture or zero trust network, you talk about shiftlet movement, we talk about the whole DevSecOps, uh, the governments are also doing a lot of things, you know, in, in the security space, Biden administration had, you know, some around as bombs in Europe also, a lot of things are going on. So talk a bit about how you're seeing uh, evolution of security in a way where organizations are actually getting actively involved. They are not passive consumers of security, but they are becoming active players on making sure that their environments, their world looks are secure. Yeah, great question. I would say the biggest shift in security is with Kubernetes and cloud-based infrastructures, it's moved uh, to what's called a declarative model. You essentially declare the state of what you want rather than declaring all the bad stuff you want to block. And that is applicable not just for spinning up cloud uh, infrastructure, but it's it, but it's useful for specifying what security controls you want to have in place. So you know, I know Faye can talk a lot more about how this relates to zero trust. But the you know the the big picture is security used to be um, blacklist and and block list uh, bad IPs malware you're looking for. So. Uh, you're always behind. You're always looking in the rearview mirror. Whereas moving to a new model, you're simply going to declare what the behavior is that you want to trust. And that have, has implications to security, to how you can shift left and how developers can become involved in declaring all that. Um, it's really an exciting time to be in security. Yeah, to add some colors to that, I mean, I call that a kind of, the old model of security is kind of, you know, reactive model. Basically, you see a virus, right? You try to find the signatures, keywords, try to catch it. But tomorrow you'll see another virus, you're going to do another this again, again. This definitely is always a chasing game. But the new way, the new, the new cloud native world, I mean, we first, first time we got a good chance to not do it this way. We, we call that also a, a proactive security model. So you don't need to you know, keep chasing the signatures keywords anymore because you, you can use this declarative model, be able to define, hey, this is the right behavior your application should always do. Other than that, with, with that baseline, you know, anything else will be treated as suspicious or malicious, right? Something you should not do. So this by this way, you basically turn the table around 
you were able to proactively pr to protect the workload in the in the new cloud space. The beauty of this is is all, two things. One is I think it basically gave you a way to do zero trust at runtime, right? Zero trust is not only about access control. It's also basically you should not trust the behavior which this application should not do, should never do, right? This database should never be accessed by by an application, you know, which not related. So so turn the table around, then this become a zero trust concept for the runtime. Yeah, another way, I mean, actually we can talk a little bit is, is automation. This makes automation possible, right? The old ways we know that you have a huge virus database, maybe have a thousand millions of records, they're gonna slow down, slow down your processing time. But in the cloud native world, when the workload scale out, thousands, millions of copies in the world, everywhere, how gonna you scale your security for that? Keep the efficiency, right? So, but with this zero trust model, as I mentioned, I mean, this become possible because the you know, the valid behavior can only be limited, very limited. Doesn't matter if it scales hundred times or thousand times, it can still be that you know three five policies. So this is the way we look the world. We think this new proactive zero trust model is a better fit for the cloud environment. You covered, you know, you know, a lot of, you know, areas there, and I do want to pick some of those there. Uh, you talked about automation. Uh, you talked about uh, zero trust. Uh, we also talk about, you know, whole shift left. When we look at security, it is as much about tools and technologies as it is about people and culture. Because if you don't have the right culture within organizations, these tools are not going to help. So as you're seeing the evolution of security landscape, how much you're seeing cultural shift is either happening or cultural shift is important? This is an issue all of our customers are wrestling with. Um, you have traditional security teams who know how to operate, let's say, a next generation firewall, but don't know about the dynamic uh, declarative nature of Kubernetes. It's completely foreign to them. So the notion of declaring security rules for applications as they come into the pipeline and they get autom uh, automatically updated is completely foreign to them. At the same time, you have operations and developers who are, you know, with the shift left, being asked to care about security issues, like what network connections are allowed and what process and file activity should be allowed in their app. Uh, <clears throat> but they don't understand um, zero day attacks and uh, deep packet inspection and why that's critical to maintaining runtime security. So there is an educational process uh, going on with these teams, a changing of who is responsible, how is it responsible, um, how are those responsibilities implemented in a company, and uh, what processes are do they need to create so that they have the right checks and balances throughout the pipeline. That's true. I mean, this is DevOps, you know, kind of momentum is already changing the whole ecosystem, right? We know that developers now build containers, right? That's why security also shift left. I mean, since, I mean, developers not only care about their applications now, they have to think about, oh, what's my configurations to make it more secure in the later when a when you run in the in the cloud environment, how to scale that out to, to make sure my configurations right follows. So that's why the there's another kind of uh, concept is uh, security policy as code, right? This security policy as code actually is an example of security shifting left as well, because the developer understands the behavior of application, they can clearly declare, hey, this is my behavior. I define that as a manifest of the secure policy. Then it follows the pipeline transferred all the way to the runtime on the right-hand side, and it just applies. So, so this is a, definitely, as you mentioned, the culture, the, you know, the pipeline, the whole thing is changing. And definitely more and more developers have to be involved in some security decisions. So this is exactly what we are seeing in the field. When we talk about uh, this cultural aspect and we do talk about things like DevSecOps uh, or, you know, 
ideally it's you know that hey these things are moving into developers pipeline developers are you know getting involved but the fact is there are certain areas where we do need a specialization or security is not that easy let's say uh, in old days it used to be silos networking folks storage folks security folks today also we, it's not about the silos but there are folks who are specialized or interested in that particular field so when we do look at this whole you know uh, security is you know everybody's problem it's organization wide problem devsecops mean you know or shift that means everything is moving into uh, the developer pipeline but what is happening in reality because when you do look at your customers you cannot expect uh, developers yes they will as you talk about you know uh, security as code or when we look at infrastructure as code to make things easier for developers so that they can embrace these practices but we cannot expect them to become security experts two areas um vulnerability management uh, compliance auditing and things like that is a very specialized field. So people, you know, organizations exist to look at vulnerabilities, figure out which ones are most impactful and figure out how to remediate those and track those. Um, so that's an area you still need those specialists. Of course, now the vulnerability scanning results are coming from everywhere in the pipeline. Uh, so that's what's different. And then on the, um, like, for example, diagnosing a zero day attack. During runtime, when you're getting all these alerts and events, oh my God, there's these network connections. This application is not behaving as it's supposed to. You're not going to ask the developer to go in there and check it out, right? So you do need the traditional security team to go in there and investigate and try to figure out if there is a kill chain in progress or um, what data is being compromised, just like you would have had before. Yeah, another point is that's that's also the job of the you know, like a new vector is doing. We try to make security you know easy, not not too complicated for developer to use. Right, we try to put the right tool, give the right give the deep visibility for them to easy to understand the environment, for them easy to scale, as well as even though you know. You have runtime like a zero day complicated threat, but we can visualize that we can give you the you know uh, minimum efforts to apply defense in depth in the runtime. So with the right tool, when the tool is growing, you are able to leverage a lot of knowledges from security experts, right? You don't need to know everything by yourself, but you have the right tool to help you on that. I have a question regarding when we look at separate security teams, sometimes developers don't want to go and talk to security teams because they slow them down. They're like, nope, you cannot release that. How do you see organizations are or can reduce the friction between these teams? Uh, realistically, you know, hypothetically, we'll say, hey, you know, it's DevOps, it's zero trust, it's, you know, shift left. Uh, but uh, talk about what you're seeing in reality and how they can improve this. Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. Uh, if you look at the, to this week is RSA week. I mean, a lot of people may know that, right? We have a talk in the RSA. The topic is uh, zero effort, zero trust security. I think zero effort is kind of one of the keywords I want to highlight is, you know, security is, uh, you know, so much things inside. It's too, it's really complicated, you know, networking endpoint, you know, APIs. I, as I mentioned, with the right tool, with the leverage of the knowledge, group them together, we're trying to give developer a chance, you know, to understand at a certain level, but also, make it really easy to use. I mean, the, I, I myself thinking is the old days, security kind of like a black box, you know, kind of like a secret experts thinking about, oh, I, this is, you know, too advanced for normal people to configure my firewall, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think that gonna be scale. That's a, a, that's a good way to scale security in this new world, right? We try to make things easier for people to use. At the same time, we don't want to lose any, you know, uh, advanced capabilities. So how to balance that is tricky, but a lot of companies is doing that already. So uh, that's why, I mean, there's RSA talk in our, you know, uh, new vector folks are, are trying to present the idea there. Yeah. When we just look back at this discussion today, and if I ask you, uh, if you look at modern companies or even companies who are in a very early stage of their either digital transformation or cloud journey, are you satisfied with the way they are approaching security where you're like, hey, these companies got security right, 
they are making effort the fact is security is not a product security is a process you know it's a cat and mouse game bad actors will always be there but at least we are on the right path or you feel that hey we are at a stage where we still need a lot of awareness we still need to develop it, all our tools we still need a lot of cultural changes so that we have not reached our destination of making sure that hey you know what just yes, you are i mean nothing can be secure but you are satisfied with the security uh, progress or you're like nope a lot of work has to be done yet what, what, what do you think we have customers across this completely across the spectrum uh, there are some who really have uh, embrace the whole um, dynamic, declarative, uh, automated um, securities code, infrastructures code, um, and, and integration of dev stack ops, um, you know, kind of combining traditional security with modern security. And we love to work with them because it's very exciting to see them actually, you know, taking declaring security managing the security as code in their pipeline in a GitOps fashion. That is so exciting. But at the same time, we also have companies who are kind of stuck uh, back in the old culture where they have silos. They're trying to apply um, traditional security concepts to a modern architecture. The security team doesn't really talk to the operations or cloud team or development and it's a challenge uh, working with them, you know, for, and, and sometimes they're only focused on getting vulnerabilities out. And we say, well, there's runtime security issues. How are you going to know if you're under attack in your Kubernetes cluster? Well, you know, we, we, need to, we need to focus on vulnerabilities first, and then we'll get to the runtime later. So, um, you know, it is a challenge, but at any stage that the customer is in, we want to help them along that path. Yeah, there are like a best practices, processes, as you mentioned, a lot of companies are suffered, but uh, they know they have to moving forward. So, you know, uh, as kind of mentioned, a lot of companies, they are at a stage in the transition to the cloud native world. Maybe on the other side, a lot of companies are already there. They already showed people, hey, this works for me, already scaled out. So there are multiple stages there. You know, as a one of the wonders, you know, and a lot of ecosystem wonders as well, our job basically to, you know, smooth the path for them to transition to the new world. And, you know, doesn't matter, you know, they are only care about the scanning, care about the pipeline, or they also care runtime, they care compliance. You know, there are like tools and uh, solutions be able to help them, even the process wise, pipeline wise, supply chain, you know, security solutions trying to fit in, just solve their issues and don't disrupt their process, right? Just be part of it. So that's kind of our job to to be fit into the, the, the pipeline, fit into the process to help customers. Yeah. Uh, so many details, I know. <laughs> Is there anything else that you feel, hey, Sopmil, we should have talked about that also, that was critical, but we did not really discuss this, or you think that we had a broad discussion about security? Yeah, um, one thing I'd like to add, and, and it's kind of related to this transition of traditional security to kind of modern security is that, as Faye mentioned, you have to support both aspects of it because, for example, you know, PCI uh, requires you to have a web application firewall and do vulnerability scanning. So companies do need to check the box and meet certain compliance uh, requirements, and they have certain processes in place for detecting security threats. So what we've had to do is we've had to build both the reactive a security model into new vector as well as the proactive so that we can if if they need 80 percent reactive to start out with and dabble in the more proactive they can do that uh, but if they want to be completely proactive completely automated as total zero trust model then they don't really need to do vulnerability scanning or web application firewall rules because we're going to build that detection into the new model and that's important to be able to bridge those two um, areas of security. Only one thing to add on is, I mean, if you look at from a different angle, security also needs to be a full stack. Full stack means you think about the layers of software infrastructure. You have operating system, you have an orchestrator, 
you have Kubernetes, then you have a container engine, then you have application workloads, right? It's layer after layer. When you talk about security, especially for production grade security, it cannot be one point solution, right? You're gonna have to have full stack secured. And uh, in today in the, in the market, it's really hard to find a solution to be able to cover, cover the full stack. But luckily, New Vector and SUSE together, you know, we do have a really good strong story around that, just simply because, you know, we have a securest operating system layer as a foundation. Then you have a Rancher Prime, which is a secured hardening by default. And you have add new vector on top to do proactive zero trust model. Think about the full stack view, you got the whole thing take take care of. So this is also important. If you don't have the, you know, foundation layer like from SUSE, that's fine. You, you're gonna have to find other tools to secure your operating system, right? To make it a FIP, certifi FIP certificated, some for example. So the whole stacks has to be secured. Otherwise, it's like your fans have a lot of ho one hole, then you, you lose the protection, right? So that's a, another point I would like to make. Before we wrap this up, what I do want to like kind of wrap this whole discussion into uh, that I, I, you, you, there's a lot of things that we talked about, but what advice do you have for companies? Of course, there are, as you said, the companies who are very advanced stage, they know security, this is not for them, but a lot of other companies who are still trying to figure out security out, what is your advice so that they can uh, ensure that they have at least some security strategy or their posture is more secure? My advice would be, it's a journey of many steps. So start taking the first steps, go as far and fast as you can, as your organization can. If all you can do to start out with is to do vulnerability scanning, then do that well, do it in the pipeline. Um, use other traditional tools around it, um, but make sure you are on that journey to get to the modern cloud declarative zero trust security model, because that's what it's, you know, what is required to really have true defense in depth in, in, in the future. My suggestion is take the low hanging fruit, right? Pick the low hanging fruit first, make uh, the quickly get a security insertion level. And we do have a security guide, uh, by the way, Glenn and me uh, wrote uh, a security guide for Kubernetes. That's a good way to take a look. And we have steps like step one, two, three, four, what you can do, you can do something easily quickly to get a, some level of security. Then you can do it more than once the one when you feel more comfortable, when you scale out more. Uh, so, so it does have a lot of contents inside. But uh, yeah, so as Galen mentioned, uh, try something quick and easy to have a, a good coverage and practice first. Then, you know, do more based on your situation or your plan. Glenn, hey, thank you so much for taking time out today. And I, I love the discussion. I love the conversation. I love the also advice and, you know, giving us, you know, a state of security today. And I would love to have you folks back on the show. Thank you. Yeah, our pleasure. We love talking about this. It's a favorite topic. So uh, glad to be here. Thank you a lot. Uh, happy to uh, drill into details. I know today it's very high level conversation, but uh, anytime, you know, if any detailed information are required or needed, feel free to reach out to us. Happy to help you on any or discuss or correlate. Thanks. <laughs>